Uh, welcome guys, so this will be my fourth uh, March of the Machines Aftermath uh, Premier Draft. I've just, and it's uh, something new, I haven't actually, sp I've never spent gems on a Premier Draft before. I've only used draft tokens. So, but it's, um, I did three this week. I went six, three, five, three, seven, two. And an observation is you can actually get back your entry fee if you do go five wins. So, um, since I've done well so far, let's 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 give it another shot. Uh, it is the open this weekend. I might I might try my first ever open as well, which needs five thousand gems. So I realise I've got just enough gems to do both. So seems to make sense to just. Uh, Give this another shot. And even if I do badly, I can still enter the open. Okay, ready. But I'm fully prepared for this to be the the zero three. But that's that's fine. I think I'm sure I've said that uh every draft this week so far so okay we open on uh heliod the radiant dawn we can see how many copies i have of that, of that. i am i'm still going to rare draft uh my philosophy is you get to pick 45 cards and you only need 23 for the deck you can probably so i, I feel like you can still even if you're rare drafting you can make a serviceable deck. Now this guy works with enchantment cards that, that aren't gods. Otherwise he's just a 4-4 four, for four, 4 who who can transform and make and then spells can get flash. Yeah. Anyway, I better look at what we've got here. Stoke the Flames is good. Stormclaw Rage, uh, yeah, I've heard about this one. Oh yeah, you can sacrifice and draw a card. That's that's a really good card draw engine. Uh, the best white cards, Sigil Sentinel, Aeronaut. So I think maybe best card is just Stoke the Flames here, so I'll take that. It doesn't take us into too many colours too early. Uh, I think red is a little, tends to be a little bit underplayed. That said, there's one red card in this. Oh, we have Deadly Derision as well. Okay. Right. Uh, I think there's nothing better than Deadly Derision. Let's, let's gr just grab that one. So we started with three double pip <laughs> colours. Uh, I suspect Heliod is the one we're not going to be playing. So it's kind of only good if you've got an enchantment in the graveyard. It's difficult to make that happen. Well, then it, you can transform into a 4-6. It's kind of good, I suppose, but maybe not as good as removal. Okay, complete the circuit. Let me just check. Yeah, three or four. I am going to just grab my last one of those. And um, and we have four colors. <laughs> but just to... Yeah, I have seen people trying to play this. You can cast sorcery spells if they as if they had flash. So next time you cast an instant or sorcery, copy that spell twice and choose new targets. It's just the little matter of it costing six. So you want to have all those sort of token making uh, spells, rouse reinforcements and build up a big, go, go wide. And then maybe do a triple stoke the flames to burn out my opponent. Could be good.
Okay, change the equation. Counter spell. I suppose I'm not a big counter spell guy. Furnace Rains. We could definitely go for the black red deck. I think that's which is going to be a sacrifice deck. And that's quite a key card in it. Um, or Shatter the Source is just another very good card that does six damage. Uh, yeah, Shatter the Source, please. So yeah, six mana, but it's got Convoke. Blows up probably most things in the set. Yeah, six damage. It'll even blow up Yargle and Maltani, which is an 18-6. Okay, Judith the Scourge Diva. Perfect. Black Red does something cool, and it's a rare. There's not going to be anything better than that. There we go. Okay, I've that commits me to black red. I'm gonna forget about complete the circuit and Heliod. Three removal spells and a Judith. It seems like it seems like a good start. And I'm not, I've not play, uh, drafted uh, Black Red or played it in this set yet. New experience, right? We won't be tempted by a nice green red creature. Uh, Traumatic Revelation is just a very, I think, it, I think it's a very solid two drop. Red Cap Heal Slash is pretty cool as well, but it's a four drop. I think we want, we want to get on the board. We want to bring the the mana curve down. Okay, a removal spell here. This one only does two damage, but you get to incubate for one. We have a two drop, Dreg Recycler, which is a sacrifice outlet. And we have a um, two two flyer that can bring stuff back when it dies, which is, I think that's quite good. I think I'd, I think I wanna take the sacrifice outlet. It's also a, a decent two drop. Uh, let's 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 try and get a sacrifice out outlet as early as we can. Right, invasion of Ragatha, four damage to battle, one damage to a creature. Battle or opponent. I'm just sort of wondering. Yeah, four damage to the face is quite good. We might want that. Furnace. I'd really like the mountain cycling dude. This is four three menace, and it's good against battles. So it's quite good. I think let's let's try this battle out. I I don't know if it's good. It's good. It's good in constructed, but I don't know if it's good in limited. We'll see if we have another battle we can blow up. One damage to a creature could be good. There's a few things with one toughness. The two one death touch backup guy. And we're doing potentially sort of ping it. We're pinging damage around the place, so we can fit some damage together. Right, nine three for five mana there. The uh, the Yarkle, of course, or the Searing Barb. Just does three damage. Not that impressive, uh, but it does. You know, it makes a. Uh, it incubates for one. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think it. I take it over a big creature. Um, we could try splashing for Furger. Furger's a fantastic card. So 
So uh, we're looking for Alabaster Host Intercessor. That will help us play uh, white, splash white, or any any kind of white-based multi-land. But we're not going to take a Dune Shaper. Burning Sun's Fury uh, combat trick. Probably won't use it. And we'll take the Mirrodin Avenged. Um, I'll take a good green creature. Oh, yeah, another one of those. That actually go, goes all the way to the end, which is interesting. And we have Doomscar Warrior. I am just going to rare draft that one. And it's looking... Ooh, we could we suddenly could go red-green, doesn't it? Although the reason we're playing black-red, we've got Judith, we've got Deadly Derision... Is it enough reason to play black? So I think green is back on the menu. I'm just going to remind myself I've got I've got some green options, and uh, we'll stay we'll stay a bit open. Right here we have a lot of rares available. There is a C double. There is the Kenrith Royal Funeral, uh, and there's Niv Mizzet. Niv Mizzet. Yeah, I think I'm going to try the Kenrith's Royal... Oh, it's the XL2 Legendaries. Is there any way of getting two Legendaries in my graveyard? This is such a an unlikely thing to do, to get two Legendaries. We've got Judith. We've got Furger. It's, it's, I think it's ridiculous, but niv Miss it's ridiculous as well. I'm going to take this silly card. Okay, yep, that'll do. Yep. So what third third pick? Pick three? Glissa Herald of Predation. What what on earth did they have pick in pick one and pick two? My goodness. I'm, I'll just make sure yeah, I am. Okay, we 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 might be green black. <laughs> Back in good old green black again. Um Nashi Moon's legacy. Uh Zephyr Singer is really amazing as well. But we're not playing blue. Let's let's calm down. We could we might be able to play Nashi. Uh, Menace Ward One. Oh yeah, you can exile a legendary from the graveyard. Okay, things have gone have gone a bit silly, right? Uh, Dusk Legion Duelist is a, is another rare. Right, let let's calm down. Okay, we're not playing that one. We like red cards. We still definitely like red. Ren's Resolve, pretty good. Cheap green creature. Uh, yeah, we're playing, we're probably, no, we're, uh, ooh, black green. We could take Mar the terrible mana fixing card here, Urn of Godfire. Because the, the, I don't think the pack's amazing. I hope I'm not missing anything there, but I don't think it's an amazing pack. Right. Glissing Deluge? I don't think so. Storm the Seed Core. Scrappy Bruiser. I'm a fan of Scrappy Bruiser. I think he's fine. And then we could splash for blue with that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we might sort of be four colours or something. Um, well, we're four colours so far. We'll just have to see how it shakes out. If we can get some mana fixing in green, green can become a main colour here. We've got one, two, three, four, five green cards. Oh, we have a really good green, red, rare. Mm. Oh, well, obviously I'm going to pick that. So this is where my rare drafting is, is, uh, is going to catch up with me and punish me, I think. Uh, so the really good mana fixing for here for red is the furnace host charger. I think we have to take that over the carvu because red red is still very strong here. So yeah, mana fixing top priority I think here. Um, Nashi Moon's legacy kind of cool. 
I don't think we can fit blue in the deck, so that's we just have to cut that one. That's oh, blighted burgeoning is mana fixing. Got to take that. I think hundred percent. And it's still the end of pack two. Um, we've got another pack to try and sort this mess out, basically. We're a bit low on uh, two drops, I would say. Seed of Hope. Arguably, that is a mana fixing card. I think that's what we go for. And Fertilid's Favor is a mana fixing card. Yes, please. Henrith's Royal Funeral. I don't think that's happening. Um, red White Land, you say? Or a two drop? Well, we want to splash for Furja, and that will help us. Green, A green two drop there was also probably a pretty good choice. Temp late Temporal Cleansing. Bl source, okay, a cheap red creature that we could definitely play. It's uh, yeah, late game, you just sacrifice your extra lands. And it's pretty cool. What have we got? Uh, Taser Karlov. So yeah, Death Trigger, pretty cool. Uh, this white creature's really cool. I'm going to take this uh, this white creature and probably not play it. Wow, we got another Dusk Legion duelist. <laughs> well, yeah, this is obviously where I should take Stoke the Flames. I'm going to take a Dusk Legion duelist because I am red drafting. But look at these. Look at that white in there. That's pretty good if I had a bit more of it. Rouse reinforcements there. Bit of uh, Convoke. I like the black Death Toucher. Are we... Sp yeah. We're still trying to... Get two drops. We're still trying to play black. We've got Glissa, so... Black is probably good. But yeah, it's uh, it's feeling like this might be the zero three day, somehow. I think you've got, I've got to go a bit harder on green, and so I can justify, I can play all these mana fixing cards, the favor, Fertilid's favor, and I guess Cedar Hope is sort of mana fixing, uh, <laughs> mana fixing and blade burgeoning. Yeah. Or we're just straight up three colours, roll the dice, hope for the best. Uh, let's see. Okay, my my rule of of picking of red drafting is um, yeah, not not good here. Right, yeah, we could do that, but we could also go Harobi, and uh, that works specifically with backup creatures, but also pings. Yeah, I think Harobi could be quite good in this deck. With Judith, pinging things. Right, there's another seed of hope there. There's the red cap heel slasher, bonded herd beast, drag recycler. Um, so another two drop in black seems quite good. And we're sort of definitely playing black. I'm not sure I like Seed of Hope that much, uh, unless I can bring stuff back from the graveyard. And I forget if I, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember if I can do that. No, I don't think I can at the moment. Okay, this is a rare, and it's green. It's a really, uh, yeah, that's not a good card. I'm, I'm, I'm drafting it. So maybe uh, the the lesson today I'm learning to not rare draft because I'm, this is gonna 
feel like this is going badly. Okay, another drag recycler or a portent tracker. Um, campus renovation. Portent tracker. We've got something that, that goes really well with blighted burgeoning. Let's, let's see if we can uh, get away with that. Literally another terrible card. Um, Urn of Godfire would be a other option. Let's take this terrible rare. Oh, good. Okay, we've got uh, that Death Toucher. That's quite nice. Uh, Taser Karlov is a cool legendary. I don't think I can get away with Taser Karlov. Let's let's get the sensible card here. And green is filling out a little bit. And it's looking like probably not playing red. Uh, I'm splashing red, rather. So, Aki Scrap Chomper probably doesn't make it. That's not going to make it. Okay, we've got Dina Soul Steeper. Nice sort of black-green card. Uh, this, Yeah, I'm just thinking, do we have life gain to go with Dina? Otherwise, it's, yeah, combat trick... Four drop menace creature. I'm taking the Dina before you, before it does something silly. She's also a sacrifice outlet. That's quite important. Markov Baron Convoke Life Link. Yeah, um, probably better than a uh, Halo Hopper, right? Scroll. Yeah, none of that's going to work. Just get another urn. Okay, yeah, the, take the other Seed of Hope. See if that can just fix my draws. Uh, blue red, blue red land, or a red three drop. Who does help me draw and discard? Well, blue's not that important to me, and we, we got it anyway. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, this is a bit of a mess, right? I I drafted an incredible number of rares there. And I don't think I don't it did not help that much. Uh actually I want I'll do a little rare count now. 1 2 3 4 5 Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen. Yep. A pretty good haul. Is it worth fifteen hundred gems and going zero three? I'm not sure. Okay, let's do something very uh simplistic. I'm just gonna cut all of the red from the deck. Let's see where that leaves us. It actually leaves us dead on uh, 40 cards. Uh, drop the urns of Godfire. What's the curve like? Okay. Yeah, I, I do like black and green. I, I, my last uh, deck, my last one went seven and two. So it feels comforting to go back into black green. But do we have enough removal if we cut red? We've got deadly derision. Revelation could get rid of something. Mirrored and Avenged is a bit, bit iffy. Oh yeah, we probably do not want to play this card, Leyline Immersion. 
You can only enchant a legendary. It's four mana. It's an aura enchantment. It's <laughs> and then, uh, but you do get something interesting. A enchanted creature has ward two and add five mana in any combination of colors and spend it only to cast spells. Okay. How many uh, how many legendaries have we got? We've got Dina actually. It would be perfect on Dina. No, this is a this is a, an absolutely ridiculous uh, card. Let's 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 drop that. Oh yeah, we tr uh, we might be trying to play Furger, That's right. Well, yeah, we'll cut Furger from the deck as well. So we have we have a black green deck. I think uh, Cogler and Yudaro could be quite good. You can, it's got a discard ability that's only one red to destroy artifact or enchantment. And it, yeah, so it can be a, an incubate token. You shuffle it back into the deck and you draw a card. That's four mana. So this is, this is a removal card I could splash for basically and then yeah, in rare occasions, I might actually be able to play it as a creature. If we... We do have a Windscarred Crag, which is an argument that we could maybe play... We could splash for Furger. I think I've just made a good argument for Cogler and Yadaro. And the furnish host, furnace host charger can get me a mountain. That puts us at thirty-eight cards. Uh. And we could just add the two urns if we're trying to splash things. Not the greatest card in the world, but it might do in a pinch. Yep, we've got Shatter, Shatter the Source, but don't know if it's good if we can't get red mana. Because part of the good thing is it's it's got Convoke, so it's, it's cheaper than it looks, but if I can't get red mana, I can't cast it. So that's the pro same problem stoke with Stoke the Flames. Uh, Judith is good if we can play her on curve. Is she good if we have to wait for red mana? Yeah, she's still kind of good. I think I would drop one Urn of Godfire for Judith. I don't think that, yeah, Geoderm's not that exciting. And he just, uh, these burn spells are just going to be a bit hard to cast. They're not as exciting as, as Judith. But yeah, Shadow, Shadow of the, Stor so the Source is a bit more splashable, I suppose. Uh, Mirrodin Avenged, I'm not I'm not sure if this is any good really. If Well, if I've got, I do have sort of one ones that maybe I can, that can chump block and I can uh, get a kill with. It's good with obviously Judith, but that's, um, that's a long shot. Actually, what's the curve looking like now? Hmm. Seems like a reasonable curve. Yeah, we want we want Judith in the in the deck. Uh, she combines well with Hirobi. Is there anything else that's really good with, with Hirobi? Hmm. 
nothing with uh, backup. Yeah, Nashi, whenever he attacks, you can copy a legendary or a rat from the graveyard. Um, and then, then cast it. We've got a few legendaries now. And I'm sort of self-milling with Seed of Hope. I was, I was saying earlier, I don't like milling unless I can bring the cards back from the graveyard. And then that's what Nashi does. It's kind of tempting. But uh, it is an yet another color. Well, I think uh, I think I'll, I'll just call that end of part one. And um, have a bit of a think. Uh, thanks for watching so far. And I'm back. So, yeah, I've just been tinkering with the deck um, so yeah black green we're splashing red for Judith uh, Coglet and Yudaro and uh, Furnace Host Charger and I'm splashing white for Fur just for Furger so I've got one plains, I've got the Windscarred Crag, I've got two mountains now you might notice I've also got seven swamps, some forests so I've just in fact gone up to 18 land I just dropped a seed of hope and I put another swamp in the deck I, I wanted to play put in another forest for more consistency for my obviously my mana fixing is green but I realized all my most of my four of my two drops five of my two drops are uh, are black so I don't think I can get away with six swamps in the deck that seems risky um and 18 land it would mean we've got We've got a few, a bit of a top end here. Actually, not the hugest top end, but we've got, I suppose we've got four, four drops. Uh, but also, you can count in Erd of Godfire, because you can tap this for six mana to destroy something. So you could say that's that's like a couple of extra six drops. Um, that's that's why we've got, we're playing both the urns. I think, so I think it's just better than trying to play Shatter the Source and rely on getting red mana when this this fixes my mana and it can be a, a six mana removal spell that's that sort of it make it makes sense to me anyway um one thing i'm worried about with seed of hope is milling you know glissa and a land that i need that's going to be a tough decision um so i've got one of them I, I, we don't we're not playing nashi nashi would be the one way we have of bringing stuff back from the graveyard uh i'm not playing kenris or funerals is in it is an interesting card I've been sort of trying to just get my head around it. Uh, you exile a legendary from the graveyard. It can be just one. And you draw X cards and lose X life, where X is its mana value. So we could exile Glissa from the graveyard, lose five life, and draw five cards. Occasionally, that could be absolutely amazing. Um, a lot of the time, you, it, you don't have the life points to do that, and you, and you die. So it's an interesting card, but uh, risky. And also, you have to... It's also white as well, so we're not... We're not that good at getting white mana in this deck. Um, what else is interesting? I've dropped Mirrodin Avenged. That's uh, I, I, yeah, I dropped this for the first of all, yeah, for the uh, Urn of Godfire, I think. So um, I don't think this is good enough. I think you could imagine blocking with Portent Tracker, and you know. Get, um, getting a trade off but I think I'd rather have a second urn of godfire on balance and uh, so this is the uh, the mana curve here and uh, I think we just go for it and yeah fully prepared for the zero three this is I suppose a bit ambitious trying to play Kidaro and Yogla, I think that's their names. <laughs> trying to trying to go for four colours. But I'm, I'm mentally prepared. I mean I've I fit, you know, I've got the, the the free gems by doing well uh, with my draft tokens and so I've gotta I've gotta at least sort of do this one time. 
try and spend gems on a Premier Draft. Got black and green, that's a good start. We have a whole load of unplayable things in our hand. We've got Seed of Hope, which gets us closer to a mountain, but closer to a plains. This is a very risky hand to keep. It's one, it's three things we can't count or cast, but this does get, get us two mana, two lands closer to something useful. So I'm going to gamble here. Maybe we hit a mountain and we can play Judith. And then a, we need a, a Plains and a Swamp to play Furger on turn five. Uh, hello. And I'm going to Seed of Hope straight away. No, I'll do that at the end of his turn. We get Forest, we get Doomscar Warrior. I think... Well, we could... This is something really cool we could play on four if if we top deck another land. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the Doomscar Warrior. Wow, we actually found a mountain. That's, that is incredibly good luck. So we've got a three drop and a four drop all of a sudden. Not bad. But I was... <laughs> I was very scared about taking the warrior instead of a land. I thought, I'll never see, I'll never see another land this game. And I'll die with a Doomscar warrior in hand. Charger can get us to double red, which is pretty amazing. Right, uh, yeah, Judith, other creatures get that, so he's got something you can trade off. We can Doomscar Warrior now. Uh, let's, let's just think about this one. Oh, wow. You know what that is? That's an enchantment creature. You know what Coglet and Yodaro does? Blows up enchantment creatures. Uh, that's that's funny. I, I, I want to do that. Yes, yes, we got it. We got to do it. Now maybe Doomscar Warrior is the the better play, but we draw, we get rid of um, the big creature, and we draw a card. Obviously, we could have probably played that guy in two turns. We'll, we'll, we'll top deck another land, and I'll feel bad about it because we've got the Furnace Host Charger. In fact, yeah, we can we can do that with the uh, Furnace Host Charger. But there you go. It, I I couldn't resist. I realized he was an enchantment creature. Um, we still have a Doomscar Warrior. This this is kind of good. So, yeah. Uh, now it's not so good to attack. Yeah, to play Doomscar Warrior. So, yeah, maybe last turn was the right turn to attack. And I just did something silly. Uh, we can play it. Play this guy out and play a Markov Baron. Uh, Doomscar Warrior or Judith? Doomscar Warrior or Judith? Oh yeah, he's that. That's good. That gets him to five power. He has to answer the Doomscar Warrior. I think if I put a token on it, I'm going to play the uh, Markov Baron as well. And I'm, I'm expecting removal. That's that's fine. And we're losing two cards. Okay. We can't play Furger. furger has gone. Uh, lose the Drag Recycler. He could obviously help me ping things. But a nice big 5-5 five, five creature could be just what the doctor ordered if I just top deck another land. Get an urn of godfire. So we could actually find the land with this and blow something up, which was quite cool, I think. Uh, right, he's got one green mana up, which makes me suspicious. He's got the the green thing. 
but I would it would just be a trade. It would be plus two plus two, and we trade off. Let's let's go for it. Let's get get in there. And the, this guy does something, something cool. We can get something cool, right? Three, three, for reach. Oh, this guy's got back up and death touch. I think that's pretty cool. Or we just get a land and play furnace host charge in next turn. Let's be more ambitious. Let's. Okay, we can, I think, pump up our life linker here. Just sort of play my stuff out, I think. Makes sense. Play that out. And we've got quite a board. Oh, we could have... Inv what I forget about is Invasion of Fiora in black would, would just wipe the board there. But he's made me discard and draw. He's got the really good discard deck. Uh, let's go for a Traumatic Revelation first. That seems reasonable. Right, you've got another of those. Death Rattle Oni is the, the board wipe, by the way. <laughs> uh, yes, that's the other board wipe. Other, other creatures that were dealt damage. Okay, well, it's a way of killing something. I'm, I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, this has got Death Touch. That can swing in. That's four power. That can swing in. And that's that can swing in as well. And if you block Judith, what happens? You take 13 damage and you die. So you can't block Judith. That dies and I ping you for one as well. Yeah. Nice. I'll take Glissa, thank you. Good game. Okay, good. It, it was not a 0-3. We are off the mark. A uh, dodgy opening hand, though. But it worked out. We we did the um, we did the self mill. We had to. I, did, I chose to keep the four drop creature, the really good four drop creature, and then we top deck a mountain like like a boss, <laughs> so we can play our three drop. So that that I was very lucky there, and that that just worked out. Okay, next game. Got three hours, 37 left. It shouldn't take that long. Alright, my opponent is in bronze, but do not never underestimate your opponent. We actually managed to draw uh, both mountains in the deck, which is quite interesting. I've got to remember, don't don't use mountain cycling if I draw my 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 uh, haster. Um, we have seed of hope to look for a swamp. Um, opponent's going first. We've got a turn three war historian. I think we keep it. It's just. Difficult to cast dead, the deadly derision. That's the that's the tricky thing in the hand. We draw we draw a swamp, like a boss. There we go, and and turn. Uh, maybe this seed of hope card is is better than I think. So I'll do it at end of turn. We try and we want to find the second swamp. Really, uh, Etherblade agent is really good. 
I don't think I need a fifth land yet. I'll take that very nice two drop and play it. And then we've got mana fixing. Nice. I'll say thanks. Three colors. The Grixis colors. Invasion of Amonkhet. Oh, brutal. Okay. Do we lose one of the mountains here? Because it's really... we need It's the swamp that we need. We've actually got Blighted Burgeoning. Yeah, we lose a... One of those. So, yeah. Uh, another green mana would be nice as well. And... We can play Doom Scar Warrior next turn if we blighted burgeoning now. Uh, we can do it guaranteed. So I think that's probably better than War Historian. We're not being pressured at the moment. We should do this on a mountain, I believe. We're expecting the, like like the last opponent, he's probably got Invasion of Eldrain, so probably losing these cards very soon. Uh, I've got, well, actually, hmm, I could play Windscarred Crag, you know, but then... Right, well, we want the... Uh, Doom of Scar Warrior. This this can become a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, this is what we do. We flip this and swing in. Because unless he's got Mirrodin Avenged, we're winning this, this, this a particular battle. So that's, that'll, that's what I'll go for. I will draw a card off that, which is nice, and I will play this the land. Now, when he flips this, he can copy something in the graveyard with the zombie. Well, it becomes a 4-4 version, so you've got to think about what's in the graveyards that's scary. Oh. Blight Dragon. Give it haste, and you can regenerate it for two black. And it's got infect, which means it deals damage to creatures in the form of minus one. Minus one counters, and to players in the form of poison counters. That's absolutely terrifying. And he's doing some... So that's a 4-4. Four, four. You're getting to flip it. You're getting your dragon. Wow. Nice. Yeah, he, uh, he played his sort of once and future and pumped that to 4-4. Four, four. So this has uh, protection from blue and black. You, uh, yeah, you've got the Blight Dragon, which gives me four poison counters a turn. I'm going to... Uh, right. So we can Deadly Derision that attack and get a card. Or we could offer a trade, and then we still have this. Actually, no. I'm going to Deadly Derision that. Then I've got two mana. I can play a Portent Tracker, and that helps me ramp next turn, because I've actually got a land with two mana. Which is very nice. So let's let's do the portent tracker. Could have, could have made the the two two. So one two three four five six seven mana. I could uh, play next turn. Invasion of Kamigawa is going to tap down the three three, and he's going to flip that. So this is another problem. Protection from black and blue. And he now gets a 2-3 flyer. The other thing is, your Kogler and Yodaro uh, can blow up the sword. 
of course, because they can... Um, that's something cool. That's a cool thing they can do. Uh, for four mana. Yeah, I think that's what we want to do. Just uh, let me count my mana again. Six. I got seven mana. Then I can still play something for three uh, afterwards. Right? Let's play that for uh, green. Red. Red. Green. Yeah. Let's untap it. Play it for green. We're going to. Destroy sort of once in future, which seems cool. Uh, still got four mana available. We could play Drag Recycler. No, there's no point doing that. Uh, Judith is pretty good because it pumps some other creatures. But let's do War Historian first. So Judith can always come down. That because that's got oh that's got reach. I forgot that. So, there's a blocker for you to deal with. Um, and I'm just thinking about this, because I could have played uh, Cogler Yadaro. It's red-green, and it would have killed the go gorilla. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and block that, and uh, you're going to get a creature back, aren't you? You're gonna, you want the Blight Dragon back. I get, I see your game. I see. Okay, I, I just let that through. Just let that through. Because I don't know if I can deal with um, a four-four flying infect. That seems that seems scary. Okay, well we've got uh, a Phyrexian to attack with. We could, yeah, yeah, obviously we just yeah we just draw a Glitha, um, which seems good. It just seems insane, actually. Um, yeah, play, play, just play Glissa into probably into a counter spell. Now I think about it. <laughs> um, okay, okay, not bad. Right. Uh, so we can give this first strike and death touch, but we don't need to. We don't need to. Let's. Um, incubate two twice. Nice bit of value. My opponent might have a, a board sweeper here, of course. I'm going to swing like this. And I think I should play the Judith as well. That draws me a card. Untap that land. Play the Judith. Can't quite play the Markov Baron. And yeah, I could have played that pre combat and done two extra damage. That was a bit of a miss. Hopefully, it's not going to matter. This is going to let him draw a card. It'll get him, you know, he needs a board wipe. Gets him one card closer to the board wipe. We've got to assume he has it. Invasion of Fiora plus a land. He needs land. Okay, Azumi Informant. What's sort of not too important? Probably the Dreg Recycler. Okay, I'm going to keep slamming lands. So I've still got a lot of things to do here. Um... So, don't want to attack with Judith. Um, we want to play Doomscar Warrior and pump something up. I think I like the idea of pumping the War Historian, so he makes something else a threat. Because if he's got removal, you know, you don't want him to. He has to. He has to kill Glissa basically. 
Let's uh, actually just flip all the incubator tokens for free. That seems good. And of course they're 3-2. And I suspect we attack with everything because he can't trade effectively with Judith. Okay, that's a 4-3. Okay, that was a good game. Um, the deck felt quite strong there. It's uh, encouraging. Right, quick break. Right, and I'm back. So, of course, I'm getting pangs of guilt now. I am, I am that jerk who managed to get Glissa in draft. It's usually uh, I'm on the other side of the board. Okay, I go first. I have a two drop, a two drop, a three drop, and two land. Uh, this gets us to three land. So, I think that is a keep. I mean, if we can just get to four land. Ooh. Uh, that's good. Yeah, go for the tracker. Straight away. We can uh, play Fertile its favor if we get to four. Okie doke. We're going to play. Right. Just tap that. Untap that. We're gonna play this guy. See if he's got a counter spell. I'm gonna put the counter on this on him to make him a three-two. Just because he's potentially my early beater. He's probably gonna get blown up here. Okay, right, you've got your your cycling. I've missed uh missed my land drop. He obviously has made his. And now he's got the progenitor Exarch, which I have to read every time. Uh, incubate three X times. So you've incubated three once and then you can transform for free. But the fantastic news is I have hit my uh, mountain. Now, point something out here. I had Hirobi in my hand and a backup creature. So I could have... Uh, it might have been very smart to hold this back until I played Hirobi. And then I could use this to blow something up. But let's think about this. So I was about to cast Fertilid's Favor, which you can tar you can target a creature with that. But this is just a yeah a cat cleric. Um, but I think I want to play Hirobi Death's Whale now, even though it it lets him blow my stuff up potentially. Okay, let's let's do that. Untap that land. Play Hirobi. Swing in. So the Fertilid's Favor can blow up his next creature, basically. Okay, Invasion. Yeah, he gains a card, draws five. Pretty sweet. And we could we can just play Glissa now. Uh, that's fine. We want, obviously want to play Glissa pre-combat. Funny if she, if any of these things say target, <laughs> I accidentally target all my creatures and they all get blown up by her Roby. So what are we thinking here? He could play a Plains and uh, play Sunfall. That would be terrible. There's a Plains, but it's... Barrel and carry serve. Oh, it's two things. Pretty cool. Yeah, okay. Uh, 
So I could pop these Phyrexians and attack with every uh, well everything apart from apart from you. I've just got to remember I've got Fertilid's favor and I can pop this first strike menace and he makes the uh, Ragavan uh, token. Yeah, don't forget that that's got first strike. Okay, we're going to use Hirobi here. We've got Fertilid's favor. This does say one target artifact creature. Right, target player. I I want to. I don't blow up when I target myself. No, good. I'll blow up Barat this guy because of because of Hirobi. Yes, that's satisfying. And uh, we're going to get. Uh, let's get the planes because we might need it. And next to combat, let's make uh, incubate tokens. And you can only do three damage to Glissus, so let's swing in like that. But I wanted to get the interaction with Hirobi there. I think that's the first time I've managed to do it. And let's untap a land, and we can play Urn of Godfire, because why not? Okay, he's getting a spell back. Okay, swamp. So let's let's pay the mana here. Uh, we want to give everything first strike and death touch now. So all Phyrexians, it's not target Phyrexians, all Phyrexians in first strike and death touch. Swing, 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 swing. That should be hard for him to deal with. Okay. That's, uh, this is kind of silly, but I'm going to untap that and play an urn of Godfire. Oh, right, yeah. All of the rest of them were first strike. He's got Atali. Oh, this is so this is big. What can he do with Atali? Is it all land? Mark of Baron. Oh, nice. Three, four creatures you control have prowess. That seems cool. Gets, uh, yeah, gets both of them. Gets both of them, of course. So that's going to take him to five life points, by the way. But, yeah. Or, actually, that he doesn't... Yeah, I don't think he had a reach creature for the flyer, though. Uh, but, yeah, I, had first, I have first strike. Death touch. So, yeah, difficult to gain life in combat. Okay, very reasonable start. So it's gonna gonna be at least 50-50. Try not to get too ahead of myself. Right, into the next one. Two thirds of the entry fee has been won back, so I'm not gonna feel too bad about about that, even if it does end uh, three three. Okay, we have Urn of Godfire, Traumatic Revelation, War Historian, um, and Dina as well. Okay. <coughs> We've got our mana fixing. It's it does it does tax us, but uh Lutri the spell chaser. Oh oh uh, oh no. Oh uh, three two. Uh, you, you can copy car target instant and sorcery. Uh, right, but it does cost three to put that in, and uh, you've discarded that. So I feel like everyone I've played against, I feel like everyone just does a lot of uh, rare drafting. 
Uh, I mean, Dean is not going to swing in for damage, so I think I'm going to go for the early traumatic revelation rather than later. Oh, there's your um, card advantage engine. Let's get rid of that. That's your 3-3. Three, three. Okay, and Windscard Crag. And Dina will just... Do I just have to trade off with his 3-3 three, three token? Uh, probably. Knowing what he's got, which is a lot of expensive removal. Oh, Captive Weird. Okay. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people playing this. It seems pretty good. You exile the top card of your library. Okay, the nice thing about Judith, she's only three, so we can play her with Urn of Godfire for four mana. He didn't... Uh, that's very interesting. So he didn't make the token and swing in. Just, uh, I think, uh, I think maybe we want to just attack here. Uh, I'm going to play the Swamp and play Judith. Yeah, that's right. So then I get an, I knew there was a good reason to do that. She actually pumps other creatures as well. That's a, a hidden ability. And we'll be one mana off being able to use our Urns of Godfire for, uh, as a removal spell. This exiles something off the top. Furnace Reigns, oh. You get that till end of your next turn. So what have, what's your sacrifice outlet here? I definitely don't want to play Glissa. I can't play Glissa, so... Um... Certainly that is very, a very interesting situation that's developing. Okay, how about swinging in with War Historian? I think... Do I want to play Dina first? Is there a good reason to do that? No, she could only sacrifice another creature. I was just, I was just thinking, was that a good idea? Playing it into that... Um, yeah, just swing in with the 4-3. Let's keep it simple. He has loot tree in his hand now. He is going to trade there. Okie doke. And one point of damage to the dome. I'll play I'll play another one of these. Uh, I'm hoping I don't think there's a shatter storm effect uh, in the in the set, so I think I can just play those out. The only thing is we lose Glissa now to a rat if he does play a rat. So I've Okay, that's three damage to any target. Judith, perhaps, is the bigger threat. No, going for Dina. All right. I will ping you for one. In that case. Uh, right, so... Wait, wait, wait. What happened to Furnace Reigns? Furnace Reigns was exiled, and now it's gone. We do not need. I, I was still worrying about furnace rains for some reason. Um, if we play Glissa, he has merciless repurposing, um, invasion of law. When he has no green mana for this, I want to make a target that he wants to blow up with merciless repurposing. So I'm going to go Etherblade Agent. That makes sense to me. I'll do no attacks. And if he has a discard card, I, I will feel terrible. But I'm trying to sort of play smart here. But I might... Maybe I'm not playing smart at all. So that's... He mills and he gets an instant or sorcery. He, he wants to draw into his sixth land so he can cast this... Um, 
Okay, I'm going to play a sixth. Do I want to play a sixth land? Yes, I, I do. I definitely want to play my sixth land. He could still have discard effects. I'm going to play the Glissa. I'm not going to wait around. I'm going to incubate. So at least I get some value out of Glissa before she gets killed. Yeah, I kind of, uh, I, I kind of deviated from the plan there. I realised he didn't hit six mana. He might not hit six mana next turn. So let's take a risk on Glissa. That's that's the new plan. Uh, Etherblade agent obviously trades off with that, so that's no good. No attacks. So he's going to do that to try and draw another land. He's drawn the other land, so Gliss is dead next turn. This, uh, we know this for certain. Okay, we can flip him into a rogue. That seems good. Two life. We can flip one of our thingies. And then we can just swing with the Phyrexians. Uh, first strike and death touch, please. And then we get a good swing in for some damage. That's what I'm thinking. Could have incubated two more. That might have been better value. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Okay, finally the Oracle's going to die. That 3-3 three, three is going to die. Three damage goes through. And end the turn. No, you're playing Chandra. But Chandra does some kind of burn damage. I'm guessing five damage. Has to be, right? Five damage to two targets. Okay, right. So almost like a mini Wrath. But that is Chandra out of there. Okay, two damage to your face. And I'll play I'll play a land. Oh look, I could have t see you see what I did. I didn't play the land last turn. I thought I'd be clever, but now I can't activate my thing. I'm just gonna blow this up, and we'll get through for five damage, which seems quite good. Put him on five. Three damage. That takes that one out. Loot tree. Three more damage. Nice. Good move. So that's... Okay, she died first. Therefore... The trigger won't happen when this guy dies. Yeah, he's done it smart. He knows his timings. So I'm going to go face with the damage. Okay, we have we have a 2-2 two -two creature. Do we need to blow up loot tree? Is there a particular... No, it's when it enters the battlefield. So that was the, the perfect... Uh, time I think to use loot tree uh, this is not flipping yet I can swing in trade off yep I'll play this this slightly uninspiring 2-2 lifelink and end the turn but I'm out of action really and he's got loads of stuff he's still got two heavy duty removal spells takes that out, fair enough. 
Um, I'll, I'm giving him a target for merciless repurposing here, but... He might have a choice between flipping the incubator and doing the repurposing. Yeah. Right, um, so obviously he'll trade with the incubator if he if he can. I don't want to attack here at all. So merciless repurposing end of turn, I guess. Yep. Couple of three threes I've got to deal with. Uh, now there's a, one problem with, actually no, I don't think it's a big big deal, Urn of Godfire. Okay, let's see where he's going to attack. They're both going to go there because you get uh, Grandmother Sengir. I'm going to use the Urn of Godfire here, I think it's the better choice. I'll just keep the thing in my hand mysterious. It stops that flipping. The only concern was the double red card in my deck, but I can get the treasure with Deadly Derision. Oh, that's a nice... that's a really nice card. Okay, we can potentially chomp block to stop you getting that. How bad is Ravi Singer? 3-3 three, three flying. When my creatures die, it gets bigger and you gain one life. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty bad thing, but I think I have to kill this. We know this one brings... Whenever it attacks, it brings legendaries back. So it can bring loot tree back. Uh, he's got ward one. So that, that just happens now, I think. We, we pay that. I think there is no better use for portent tracker now than as a chomp blocker, so... That is what we'll do. If it can slow him down for another turn. Oh dear. And then that gives it menace, and then he can flip that and get a huge creature. So I think we lost this one. Even though we did have uh what's the face? Glissa Sunslayer. Eight eight five 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 five. So practically dead in one turn. It's, fu it's funny how the board just builds up and up uh, and you just die in one turn. I think, yeah, obviously because of the battles sort of adding things to the board. But uh, yeah, he got some... Obviously, he had good, he's got Judith as well. He, good value this game, of course, for having the companion. And that was a fan, that was a fantastic companion, blowing up two things with Volcanic Spite. And he's got, you know, f uh, four color good stuff deck as well. Uh, so that doesn't have trample. Uh, we just stop the nine damage there. She gets Ravi Sengir. He's probably worrying that I've got a uh, board wipe, but I don't, unfortunately. Okay, well, that's the second source of red. Good game. So yeah, um, companion decks are good. They are another uh, big threat. And that was that was some pretty impressive four color nonsense that he had there. Uh, yeah, I, an interesting, he played Chandra and used her to just get a two for one, killing my two best creatures. And then he got the two for one with Lutri as well, my, for my two smaller creatures, so it was just value, two for ones all the way. Merciless repurposing is just a two for one as well. I can't remember what he cast that, oh yeah, he cast that on um, my three two 
Death Touch. So yeah, that was a that was a nasty deck. We'll just have to see see if this deck has a companion. I'm pr now I've not seen a board wipe for a while. I think I'm due a board wipe. I think we're gonna get we're getting a Sunfall invasion of Fiora. Uh, the red one is the three. Uh, there's the three damage board wipe. Yeah, I think that would pretty hit us pretty hard actually. Oh, it's all green and all black cards, including two double black cards. A double, well, there's three double black cards. One of them needs white as well. Uh, we could just try and top deck into something. I, I'm going to go ahead and mulligan that one. Let's just see another hand. Uh, Daddy Derision and Hirobi uh, are back. Okay, let's keep six cards. Do we... We haven't got synergy with Hirobi. We've got no... I think we... Yeah, just drop the Hirobi. Keep the removal spell. They're probably, well, hopefully we hit a land, but they'll try and hit a, uh, okay, cool. Uh, we'll play, play the portent tracker. We're going to get, well, we've got a third land. I think, I don't, I don't mind him gaining two life. I've decided I'd rather do something following turn so that's a good rollout okay we could uh, well we could play our tap land and play Markov Baron and I can now you see what I missed there uh, this has got convoke so I didn't really need to play this guy what I do have is Deadly Derision, which I could use on the Historian, because I'm getting run over at the moment. But at least I could make a Markov Baron and trade off, play a tap land. Not the best Markov Baron play in the world, but just I was thinking, yeah, if we could play Dina and a Swamp on tap, yeah, we could have yeah, we could have got Dina out uh, and tapped her to play the Baron. That was that was probably the better play. Then we'd have got two things onto the board. So he's making his fourth land drop with some cycling. Oh, that's just gonna die. Wow. Okay. That is some uh, serious business. Okay, we've got Dina and a Traumatic Revelation. Or we have to Deadly Derision that. And then we can play... Hmm. Then we could potentially... The treasure could give us the Charger next turn. Or well, yeah, we've got we've got a tough decision. I'm gonna go for the Dina traumatic revelation play because we gotta we gotta see what's coming. It is just more of the same. So that's a couple of two two knights, and that pumps all humans, and everything is humans. Oh, so that is an incredible tribal lord. Well, Phyrexian, human. Okay, uh, I feel like I have to hit the vanguard here. 
But that is uh, just a very aggressive green-white deck. I don't think I'm going to survive somehow. But it means Dina can block that. Uh, or, or actually, yeah, that's not going to be a problem anyway. It's not a human. So, uh, end the turn there. Um, oh, good point. Yeah, that's we need that for mana. I could double block here, lose this. But then, no. I think I'm just going to block like that. I think my plan now is Deadly Derision, and then I can play Furnace Host Charger the following turn. See, I could have done that last turn, maybe, but I did. I did feel I needed to. I should do the traumatic revelation. Okay, my turn. Earn a godfire. He's got another war historian coming. I will deadly derision that one. Uh, I'm not chump blocking with this. I will untap a forest and play the Urn of Godfar with the forest. And next, and no attacks. So it looks like four damage going through next turn. Desperately trying to stabilize here. Actually, uh, block a knight makes more sense because in case he does have a, a pump spell, he's gaining more life from the uh, Sanctifier. Another wall historian, yep. As we suspected, and uh, if, it, if the last card is a removal spell, then we're in trouble. We actually also have Furger, which is a lovely 2-4 lifelink. Uh, what's he, the thing I'm, I'm thinking, he, he's got maybe Seal Away. That's probably the most likely thing. Uh, I've got to think if I'm dead here, if I just do one block, I do take seven damage. Um, so, because I'm thinking this is a potential chomp blocker. So the safest play might be play Furge, I use the treasure. That means I can't play the charger. No. Okay, right. Red. Untap. Play charger. And I don't want to hear from you anymore. And no attacks. Did you... Either of these cards are a removal spell. Because you can do, you can do the, the two white and one removal spell. And if, you do, if they are, he wins. Okay, block the 3-3. Three, three. Um, block a 2-2. Two, two. If he's got plus 2, plus 2, then it's a trade. Take 4. Okay, luckily he didn't have the... Sw um, what's it called? <laughs> the charge. That would have been horrendous. Um, okay, let's uh, tap that for white, and uh, untap, play Fudger. That has lifelink. We need it. We need to block with everything. Has he got anything? Has he got something? Forest. Okay, good news. So I'm going to use this and put a token on Furja. And then we can swing in and gain three life. I feel like I've stabilized. Amazingly. We're going to do extra damage from Dina. I think that's the first point of damage Dina has done. And he just concedes there. Wow. That was uh, that was a turnaround. I'm thinking I could have had my... If I didn't do Traumatic Revelation, I could have had my Furnace Host Charger 
a turn earlier, but then I wouldn't know what was coming, what was in his hand. And he had, and I got rid of the the dude that pumps all humans. So suddenly his he's got he's attacking with four threes and three twos. So Dina can't like bounce anything. She has to jump block. So maybe I made the right choice. I'm not sure. But, but yeah, if I get the 5-5 five, five out of turn earlier, then maybe he can't attack. Anyway, that's... Uh, we're, we're slightly better than 50-50, which is good. And we're I've got 1,400 gems back out of the 1,500 entry fee. So that's, 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 a good, that's a good day at the office, I think. Got three of our colors, that's good. Godfire tracker turn four doom scar warrior or no turn three turn three with portent tracker he obviously we won't have an attacker to back up but never mind Okay, we have a 2-1. Okay, how about uh, we just casually play a War Historian. Instead of ramping this out. Just thinking you might... Well, this, can be, have, this could have four toughness, couldn't it? Beat Stick. Oh yeah, okay. And this can transform into something cool. Okay. Uh, looks like he missed a land drop. That is unfortunate. Right. It's Doomscar Warrior time. Pop that on the Historian. Swing in. Uh, swing in with this as well. I've got loads of land. Yeah, I'm going to swing in with that. That's not first strike or something. Yeah. That gets trample and I draw a card, I think. Oh, Hirobi. Yeah, let's get let's get Hirobi. I mean, if he got if he's got targeted effects, it makes it easier to, for him to kill my stuff. He gets menace and he gets a treasure, so he's he's fixing his mana now. Uh, let's swing in with everything. And yeah, all right. We got to five wins, we got the entry fee back. Nice. That was unfortunate though, yeah. It's horrible to get stuck on two lands. Okay, what have we got here? Two, it's a two lander. It's uh, dodgy. We're drawing an extra card because we're going second. We've got Dreg Recycler on two, and if we even if we miss a land, we can play. We can still play Markov Baron on three. I think we just about keep this. We've got we've got black and green. I mean, and he's not going to blow up a Dreg Recycler, we think. There's another land. Perfect. Okay. So we're absolutely fine now. Okay, Blade Master. Another land. Cool. Yeah, pumps for four mana, of course. He's not going for an attack. Uh, can't do a trick here with playing out the Baron as well, but uh, 
Let's play out the bigger creature. That seems to make sense. Um. Yeah, I think I, I, I I'm okay about trading here. Now I can pump it up. I can't block. I hope he does pump it up. No. So he's got something else. Renata Cool to the Hunt. I mean, I'm a fan of this card. I've, I've heard people slagging this card off, basically, because uh, pe people are greedy these days. They, don't, they want to enter the battlefield effects on their four drops. So, yeah. Uh, but I think it's good. Um... Right, we could swing in or stay back. I think we want to slow the game down a little bit. Let's stay back and defend. Because he's winning this race with Renata. All his follow-up creatures are bigger. Uh... So we're in a little bit of bother here, I would say. And he's found his black mana, which is also pretty bad news. So there, finds the next land. And it's a two th it's a scary 2-3 creature as well. Not to be uh, trifled with. What we would like is some... Um, we need to hit some mana fixing, because we've got two dead cards in hand. Okay, my turn. Okay, Deadly Derision. Yes, just do it now on Renata. I mean, he might play Glissa next turn and I'll feel very, very silly. He might have a protection spell. I, I don't know what the green protection spell is. Okay, no, he's going to sacrifice and use Final Flourish. Okay, that makes sense. Well, <laughs> to complete that game, my friend. Because that would have given me a treasure, so that was a, a very good move on my opponent's part there. My cards will stay stuck in my hand. I mean, he had five mana last turn, so if he had Glisser in his hand, he'd have played it. It's just in case he topped, top decked the Glisser. And we lose another creature here, and he gets his stuff gets bigger. He's gonna have this. Oh, he's gonna. Is he gonna go for the incredibly scary Skittering Surveyor, three four? So we'll get that down to one, and then that's flipping next turn. Ah, we have white mana off the top. The one, the one planes in the deck, we can play a fur chair. All right. Uh, it could block a skittering surveyor, I suppose. Um, yeah, that can pump every turn. So, enter. So that blade master is a menace now. We can't really block it. We probably have a choice to double block the Surveyor. Or just single block the Surveyor. Uh, he's just going to go in with one. And he's got... That can be a 4-4. Four, four. He's 
got two cards in hand as well. Uh, I'm unliable, uh, unlikely to get the the trigger from Furger. But this, I feel like this flipping is a disaster. And I think I'm just going to take a massive, massive risk here and try and just slow him down for one more turn. See if I get a double block. He, he can trade for Furger. He's only got seven uh, mana. He might also have instant speed interaction, but we'll see. That is an incredible iridescent blade master. If that trades for Furger. Turn. That's, I think that's just how it has to be though and I could chuck the drag recycler in the way because basically that's an extra six power attacking next turn so it might make a certain amount of sense to block here I'm thinking Just keep that big nasty creature off the board for one more turn. See if we can top deck something. Oh, Tangled Skyline's an absolute beauty. And he has that as well to just to just sort of win. Okay, Seed of Hope. Mill the top two, keep one of the permanent cards. Ooh, yeah, that, that could be useful. Uh yeah. So let's play Forest. So Glissa, we got to uh, not do that one. Incubate twice. You have to be on the defensive here with Glissa. And uh, we can't stop everything, unfortunately. And he can just ping that thing down with uh, the portent tracker, of course. I hope he doesn't have removal here. That would be tragic. That is a uh, just a little matter of a five five. So that's going for it, okay. Portent tracker could just remove Oh right, you're going you're going face. Because the portent tracker is obviously gonna remove that. So I think uh, I'm on 25 life. I don't I don't block that, to be honest. But this is making two chump blockers every round. So that could be a challenge for him to break through. He still has to really blow up. Glissa. Now, what does the, he do? Tyvar the Bellicose. Whenever one or more else you control attack, they gain a death touch. They gain death touch until the end of turn. Uh, each creature you have control has, whenever a mana ability this creature resolves, put a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the amount of mana this creature produced. This ability triggers only once per turn. Does he have any mana, guys? Well, I'm going to say nice. I've never seen that uh, before. That's a lot of creatures. Hopefully, I can, with help from Glissa, I can catch up a little bit. Okie doke, we got, we got this dude, uh, we could, could be aggressive here, the swing back we're looking at though is, 
Right, that's 6, 11, 16, uh, 19, 20. Exaxes. Because um, what I'm thinking is play this, incubate this, and then I've got I've got this as a blocker because obviously he's not attacking this round. Uh, yeah, with first strike death touch, Gliss is just unstoppable. So. Flip this guy. Um, first strike and death touch, please. Swing in. Do I keep these back to block? Uh, I th I'm scared of... I'm scared. So I'm going to keep one guy back to block. But I'll send one guy in. That seems like a... A fair compromise. Oh wow, okay. Well, we got four land off the top of the deck. Um, that's something. <laughs> and now have I... Did I, did I make a boo-boo a there? Am I going to get in a lot of trouble now this turn? Because we know he's got 20 damage. If he's got two removal spells, he just wins. And this does something complicated that I haven't quite grasped. Elves get Death Touch. That's a Satyr. That pumps something, so that's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay. You've got Death Touch. So I'm quite happy. This is basically taking 6 power off the field. He can always trade... Yeah, that's that's an okay trade. That's an okay chump block, I reckon. And of course, that gets to three three, so that's a bit more threatening. Uh, right. I mean, can Glissa on her own hold off an entire army? Let's not do the wrong one. We've got to incubate two twice. Glad I got... Well, I got four land off the top, but we top decked a fifth one. But that's that's something. But, uh... Okay, no attacks. And the turn. I think possibly Glissa has met her match here. Okay, another another creature, three one. So a very creature heavy deck, gotta say. He did have that to he had he had two removal spells, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these into creatures. Now if Gliss is uh passive um Wow, okay. No attacks. Okay, it was actually six land on top. I'm I'm kind of uh, suspicious now. I'm thinking it didn't put all of those lands on the bottom of the deck. It just put them right back on the top of the deck. We got to keep making creatures because he he keeps drawing creatures and he's he's making <laughs> and creatures that make other creatures. It's uh, a bit worrying. If I look at this deck. Yeah, it doesn't show me that there's... It, gives it shuffles them and puts them on the bottom randomly, right? That's what Doom Scar Warrior says. Bottom of library, random order. So we might have at least two more land to draw if that, it has just put them back on the top. 
I'm probably overreacting. Six six land in a row is not a uh, is not an unusual thing in the game of Magic. Now I'd have thought he'd. I suppose I've got a four six here. Uh, just thinking he would swing with a five five. One card in hand. It is. Oh, nice. You've got your own Doomscar Warrior. Something's getting bigger, and it's getting trample. And you're going to get card advantage out of it as well. Okay. Do I trade three for that? Can I afford to do that? Pass two attackers. Actually, let's just uh, activate these. Obviously, you can do that after the uh, they've they announced their attackers, but I don't know. Feels a bit worrying. He's got no cards in hand, so it's just a case of trading three guys for that one guy. If I don't do this, he gets to pick one from the top six, which could be absolutely devastating. Could obviously be a removal spell for Glitha, so I think I have to do this. I hope I haven't forgotten something, because there's, there's there's a lot of permanents on the board here. Right, okay. We got rid of the big one. There's a there's a chump blocker that'll do. Potential potential chump blocker if we need it. Make two more, please. So this is uh quite a Standoff. No attacks and and turn. Land. He's just playing land. Okay, I'm activating these. Okay, cool. We have we have something. We have something. Put it on a forest. So excited. Incubate two. And really exciting. We can actually play Judith finally. It's only taken till t uh, twenty three cards into the deck. For turn fourteen or so for my 3 drop. Go okay, next. Uh, incubate twice. Let's not mess about yet. Okay, um, no attacks. I'm going to play that, which reveals I've got nothing in hand, but it means I can uh, I can transform all of these. Which should help, hopefully, uh, solve any problems. Take a drink it. Sure. Okay, good game. Slip all of these. And um, we've got 17 turns left. I don't want to be rash and attack. Well, not too early. Go over to uh, my turn. Okay, we've got the Urn of Godfire. That's pretty cool. OK, 
can shoot something. Um, do we want to? Do we need to make any more, or do we? Are we okay attacking? Is the question. I, I'm going to say let's let's go for it. Let's attack with about three. Yeah, obviously with first strike and death touch. Uh, let's make it four. I, I'm, I'm feeling lucky. He gets a surveil when that dies, of course. That's quite handy. He gets another token when that dies. Staying on top, now it's getting a land off top, and we'll end the turn. If we blow up um, one of his blockers, say it's 5 4, he's got four blockers. And he concedes. Okay. Yep, Glissa is stupid. My opponent had a much better rollout than and uh Glissa could just stabilize the board. The key moment there was I traded my Doomscar Warrior for his um four four primor primordial ooze, uh, the, the 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 battle flip the Muraganda battle flip. Because that was basically four four, able to pump anything by plus two plus two. So I thought that's a that's a good trade. I want to get rid of basically six power off the board. So we get to six wins. That's nice, very nice indeed. That's uh, so we've made a slight profit today. So yeah, it's turned out well. Good decision to uh, try and get one last uh, go at this draft in before it times out. Uh, no green, no green uh, to cast Seed of Hope. Uh, we have Glitter in the opening hand. Um, I'm going first. I'm not getting that extra card, but it, if if I have a forest in the top. In the next uh, four cards, next four turns, I have a turn five Glisser. So this seems like a stupid decision, but I've got, I think I decided seven forests in the deck. Seven forests in how many cards? This is this seems stupid, but I'm I'm going to go go for it. I'm on one loss. I'm going to take the gamble. I've got nothing I can play in the opening hand. I've got one of my splash colors. I've got the minor splash color, but I'm missing a main color. Oh, there's a forest. Okay, <laughs> well, we can play Dina on curve. Beautiful. That's nice. Norn's Inquisitor. Oh, no. So we can't... Yeah, that's going to be a 3-3. Three, three. We can't block. Uh... Um... Yeah, just keep this back. I've got Seed of Hope here. Let's Seed of Hope now, see if we get something playable. Okay, cool. Let's get another forest. Got two land off the top. And we do your point of damage and no attacks. If I swing, I do one damage, but then he just swings back for one damage with this. So I don't think it's worth it. Obviously, he's got the 3-3 three, three here, which is a problem. And if he's got removal... He's going to blow up Glissa, obviously. Uh, so we might lead with Furger and then play Glissa. Because he's not playing, doesn't look like he's playing black. Oh, beautiful. 
That's why he was holding his mana. He wanted to get another 3 3. Yep, very good. Uh, Furnace Host Charger. So I'm going to do literally nothing this turn. I could dig a, a land out with that. And then I'm less likely to draw a land. And it's something to do with the mana. I'm going to get absolutely battered this turn. Probably 9 damage. Okay, two mana, makes another incubate, so maybe not nine damage this turn, but uh, more damage in the future. Couple of uh, three threes. And I will just ditch this, I think. Just to get a land out of the deck, it sort of sort of makes sense to me. We hit a lot of land anyway. Okay, we could. Oh, uh, yeah, I played a. F I have to. Okay, yeah, I have to play Glissa because I needed to play a double black for that, which was so that was silly. Uh, incubate two twice, please. So if he's got the removal. Uh, Glisses, Glisses goes bye bye, and uh, I'm probably lost. Okay, no, um, no blocks, no removal pre combat. You might have removal and combat trick. There's plenty of plus two, plus two style combat tricks. You can gain four life. Uh, you're going to get rid of my graveyard or pop a an incubator token, right? Yeah, one incubator token down. And the graveyard's gone. Okay, bye bye graveyard. Right, let's uh, let's do this properly this time. Swamp. Now we can play Furger. Um, and we could play the Markov Baron, uh, if we want to, do we want to tap? Do we, I don't particularly want to tap Glissa. I think, uh, let's play this next turn. Let's incubate a bit more. No attacks and turn. So I, I'll, I, think, I guess I'll block in the air. I don't know if I want to risk blocking with Glissa, but maybe I have to this turn. I could chump block with Dina. That is another possibility. So it feels like he's got a combat trick. I can't I can't risk my Glissa. But uh, the total damage he's got, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So block in the air, it goes down to twelve. I should gain two, but it'll be it'll be too late. So yeah, if he attacks with everything, I've got to block two things. So maybe Dina's time is up. Uh, and then, and then, okay, P plus one plus one on each creature you control. So your flyer is now four four. Okay, pretty cool. And he's still got one green mana open for a pump spell. And that's 12 mana swinging at uh, 12 mana, 12 damage swinging in. Um, right, so. I mean, this is an incredible bluff. If he does have the. If he doesn't have the the combat trick I'm thinking of. The other thing, little problem is... Uh, 
if he does have the combat trick, I'm dead anyway. So I have to, I literally have to block with uh, Glissa, I believe. I think it might be better to double block here to kill that one. Except it's obviously going to get, I think it's getting plus two, plus two. Block like that. Take eight. Oh, I don't think that works, does it? I think I had to. I have to chump block there because I'm dying to ten damage. If he does have the the thing. Okay, right. I think I've I've figured it out. I've got to do something like this. And he, he never had it in the first place, did he? I still have the Glissa. Okay, nice. Okay, but... We face a 4-4 flyer. Uh, is the Markov Baron a good idea? 2, 4, 6. I've got 7 mana. I want to just flip these tokens. Uh, then I could play the Baron, but I could flip the token and tap two things. Is that a good idea? Doesn't seem like a good idea. Is that not a... That's not a black creature. It's left my green open instead of black because it thinks I want to tap Glissa. Okay. Incubate two twice. Uh, we'll do no attacks and we'll end the turn. Uh, maybe, maybe I can do that. Don't risk Glissa this turn. Maybe that's fine. Three, still got three blockers on the ground. Oh wait, he's got... I forgot about his incubate tokens. So, yeah, that's that's kind of an issue. And those are three threes. So yeah, I've just kind of... Yeah, made a bit of a blunder there, uh, tapping Glissa, because I think uh, she is a crucial blocker to stop the three threes. Which I, just, which I have conveniently forgot about. But it's a nice combo, the... Uh, Norn's Inquisitor into Guardian of Girapur. So I probably just have to do three chump blocks on the ground here. I think that's about the uh, the size of it. Okay, well... Um, we could do that. Seven damage goes through. If he's got the combat trick, we we die. Or we just have to do two chump blocks. I'll do two, the two chump blocks. Because we've got, we've got plenty of reinforcements coming. I guess, uh, on the ground. We just have to survive the thing in the air. Okay, there's the Fertilid's favor. Uh, right, so that he wins that little battle on the ground. So that's another 4-4 four, four creature. There's too many 4-4 four, four creatures now. Okay. We get one more turn. Uh... Three, six, seven, eight. Let's just activate. Activate. The important tracker is going to just be another chomp blocker, so I think I'd rather play this than 
lose another 2-2. Two, two. Let's incubate two twice. Um, no attacks. Glissa makes games go long when, when, when the Glissa player is on the back foot. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, okay, good game. Got the removal card. Let's do that. Okay, five blockers for four attackers. Uh, we got to go here and here, I reckon. Uh, block that four four like that. Chomp and chomp. Burn of Godfire is removal. Uh, yeah, if we pop that, okay, I think it's a good game. So I'll die to the thing in the air, but I'll die, die to everything on the ground, of course. I can at least get uh, Glissa back. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty strong rollout. The uh, that's the other kind of deck I tend to lose to the with the um, that two drop that makes a three three. Little tricks that that uh, that guy can pull off. Right, lost last game. Norn Inquisitor is the one. That was the dodgy opening hand as well. I thought where I thought I'd take a gamble, and it, it did pay off. I did get the the glisser on turn five, so we've got glisser opening hand. I think this is good. A couple of two drops. See if we draw land four and five. That's the only thing that can stop us. And my opponent. It would be funny if I play Hirobi, then I play Glissa, and he has some kind of... He has a backup creature that can blow up Glissa cause, because I've played Hirobi. So you kind of... I kind of want my opponent to kill Hirobi before I play Glissa. Blue and green. Green has backup. I'm swinging in. 100%. Okay. Just that fear that your, your opponent's deck is accidentally going to um, be really good with Hirobi. Right, do we do it or not? Hirobi, Hirobi or Glissa? He's got uh, black in the deck. He might have hand removal. We're just hoping Hirobi draws out the first removal spell, basically. 
Uh, chomping carve it down. So that's uh, a 4-4 four, four that makes... Oh, yeah. Nice. I forgot. Yeah, backup creatures um, kill Hirobi. Uh, this is get both go to minus one. Uh, go to one one, so I can't block there. He didn't use a re it, it. Hey, at least he lost a plus one plus one token. Hirobi did something. Play Glissa. Make tokens. So he still has all of his removal intact. I mean that that was clean. That guy must have played against Hirobi before. Does not attack. Okay, my turn. Okay. I think we uh Make a couple of two twos. I think I want to play a Dina. We can keep Urn of Godfire in the hand. I want to go to combat and I make make more things. And no attacks. These guys are Phyrexians, by the way. Uh, and the turn. I think we start attacking next turn. Because she's not a direct Phyrexian though. Evasion of Lorwyn, okay. Nice. Now you got me there. Alright, well. Bye bye Glissa. We got we got four grizzly bears out of Gris. Uh, Glissa, basically. I, uh, I'm surprised. Are you tugged to the wrong one? You just misclicked. Uh, well, I feel bad for my opponent there. Oh, well, we c yeah, I think uh, it's pretty equal if he does kill Glissa there. I've got the urn to blow up one of his things, I suppose. But I'll take it. They all count. So, yep, another seven and two. That's two in a row in Premier Draft. Uh, have a look at the deck. Right, yeah. So, what what on earth happened in this draft? Because... Yeah, we uh the first rare we got was Heliod, so we're in we got a double white card to begin with. And then the second card I we got was I think Stoke the Flames. It's a double red card. Uh but I kept just picking the best card in the first few picks. Obviously I'm rare drafting things. Glissa I think turned up pick three in pa uh in either pack two or pack three. I was I was gobsmacked that that Glissa would go to pick three. Um, but by then we had I did have some black. I had had I was it was looking like black and red because I got Judith maybe the th third or fourth pick. I had deadly derision third pick I think. I yeah the Hiro I did to get a Hirobi. That's the first time actually Hirobi's been embarrassed in the last game, where just a backup creature has taken him out practically for free. Uh, so yeah, Hirobi might not be the best the best card in the world when when in a set where a lot where all the a lot of the creatures have a, a way of targeting for something for free. But it's it's fun. It's a bit of fun. Sometimes it just wins the game. Uh, yeah, so it kind of, once I got Glissa, I had a, I did have a couple of green cards, I think, when I got Glissa already. I think, yeah, I'd rare drafted the Doomscar Warrior. So that was probably fourth or fifth pick in pack one as well, yeah. Um, 
so the, but then I had to really dig for some dig for some green cards and it sort of made sense oh yeah green is a good good fixing color let's try and find some fixing I picked up an early fairly early urn of godfire and I got another one later and this this wasn't too bad I think this is you know it's decent it's mana fix it's you know it's expensive mana fixing uh, but it's also a, a six mana removal spell you, you you play it if you have to um I think I had to in this in this draft for, with uh, a four color deck um yeah but yeah I remember playing we played Judith for four mana with help from the um urn of godfire so that was cool doom sky warrior was really cool that got me a lot of um, card advantage uh, we didn't get any card advantage off Virgia. I think we did probably struggle to play her a couple of times. She tended to get blown up. Uh, we used, I think, Cogler and Yudaro only for the uh, disenchant, the cantrip disenchant effect. I think, remember, in the first couple of games we did that, uh, including on the uh, the protection from blue and black sword equipment, which was um, pretty scary. That was uh, that was um, a good moment. Uh, what else was good? Usual sorts of cards here. We tried playing with Markov Baron, which uh, it's a. We have no other vampires in the deck. Doesn't make a lot of sense. I suppose it's a bit like a, uh, a, a the the frog, the Halo Forager, is it called? No. I forget what the frog's called, but it's it's a it's a three drop convoke. But this this has got lifelink, which could be could be nice sometimes with, uh, with Dina and things like that. Um, Bullet and Tracker. I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of Traumatic Revelation. I think it's fantastic. Reg Recyclers as Sacrifice Outlet. So in theory, that's good. That's pretty good with Judith. Um, I didn't get the. Uh, there was a chance to get one of those red. Grab at your enemy's creature for one turn. God, I, was, I was thinking it might be a, a black, red, steel, and sack deck at one point after I got um, Judith and Dreg Recycler. But uh, that didn't quite come together. Yeah, Etherblade Agent is pretty fantastic. And I uh, I played one one of my Seed of Hopes. And it was good. I, did, I was skeptical of this card at first, but yeah, it just gets you two, at worst, it's getting you two cards closer to a land. It's just a, just fixing your opening hand. I, I just assumed every every time I was uh, had a horrible opening, I didn't have enough mana, I'd uh, use this and have a choice between a land or a glisser. I did have one difficult choice. It was between a, an, I think a third forest, or a doomscar warrior. So I took the I took the warrior and just thought, well, I've got three land. I'd ra I'd rather I'd rather keep this warrior on on the off chance I can get another land and play it. And that that worked out quite well in my favour. I did. I took a took a few sort of risks, um, with my opening hands and not mulliganing the. Yeah, the uh, the second loss was one of those. I did have Furja, Galissa, and was it Judith or something in the opening hand. Um, and no forests, no forests at all. So. I thought turn five glisser maybe is just good enough to win if they don't have rem removal. I'm not I'm not sure that's a good idea, but uh, sometimes it seems like glisser just carries the game on her own. But anyway, I think uh, yeah, that's the mana curve. Three six five four two two. So, uh, yeah, nothing left but to claim my winnings. So there w you won't be allowed to sign up for another one. I think that time has passed. But, uh, yeah, it's going to take me off that page. However, we, had, we do have another event going on this weekend called the, uh, the Open. Uh, there's the Open... Day one, traditional, where 
if we look at that, it's keep playing until you have one match loss. So that's and it's five thousand gold to enter, or sorry, five thousand gems to enter, or twenty five thousand gold. So I don't, I don't, I don't fancy that. That's just, you, you know you you don't feel like you've had a tournament if you you go there and you you just lose your first match and that's it. You go home. I think this one, so this version of it. Maybe slightly more generous with the gem rewards. So if you can get to three wins, you win. You get your entry fee back of five thousand gems. And you need need four. You need to go four zero to qualify for day two. Uh, the I find the best of one a bit more appealing. So that's. Um, keep playing until you reach three match losses, and you need seven wins to qualify. Uh, you get that's where you get five thousand gems. Uh, you only get twenty five hundred gems at six wins, so it's sort. Of, I guess it's a bit less generous with the the gems, but um, you get you get more of a tournament out of it. You get you get th three match losses before you're eliminated. So I think I might I fancy trying this uh, this weekend just because I'm usually I'm sort of busy at the weekend and I I don't have time to do these so. This is like a, a rare opportunity. Anyway, that's that's the open. That's what I'm thinking about, and it's it's good to get a nice uh, have a nice draft beforehand. This is obviously uh, I should mention this is sealed deck, uh, sealed deck March of the Machine, which I have a bit of practice in as well. So anyway, I think that is a video. So uh, thanks for watching.